calling off what appeared to be normal procedures. Engines beginning the roll that's down built now. into At 94%. the normal launch throttle, trajectory. Uh, most of the flight, 104%. This is the recording at 11.39 this morning. Shortly. Nearly 15 minutes ago now. Engines at 65%. Three engines uh, are running normally. Three good fuel cells. Three good APUs. Well, we are... Velocity 2,257 feet per second. We are now told that the chute we saw was not the escape capsule. And that is bad news. Up. Three engines now at 104%. Challenger, go with throttle up. Challenger, go with throttle up. One minute, 15 seconds. Velocity, 2,900 feet There was the explosion. Nautical miles. Downrange distance, 7 nautical miles. At that point, this 25th mission became something far different from any other for the space shuttle program. Plagued by so many delays, in the last few weeks, so many questions about its economic viability. At this point, we're going to show you tape of the seven crew members as they boarded the shuttle Challenger for the launch this morning. There you see the crew members. Commander Dick Scobie, pilot Mike Smith, Krista McAuliffe, Judy Resnick, Ellison Onizuka, Ronald McNair, Gregory Jarvis. This had been planned as a six-day mission. And you see how the crew went through this procedure. This the fourth morning because of the problems encountered, both technical and with the weather. This morning, more problems. A faulty gauge, icicles on the pad. This a live shot now at the Cape where you can only see the traces of smoke left in the air from the explosion that took place less than two minutes after the launch of the Challenger this morning. John Quinones, the latest word you're getting from the Cape. NASA Select uh, now, Steve, is uh, not, uh, not broadcasting anything on the rescue operations or on the cause of the explosion. To, for those who are... ...get to, to the debris fairly quickly. Of course, recovery ships are always standing by. Uh, and again, going back to a point we made earlier, if this had been boarded and come back to Kennedy Space Center, uh, I'm sure they would have done that. It just seems at this point that it was uh, an unforeseen cataclysmic tragedy that, that may have befallen us here today, and that there was uh, no way uh, to, to uh, make any kind of emergency uh, pre preparations to come back to KSC with the shuttle itself at, at this point. John, uh, we will stand by uh, at the Kennedy Space Center. Let's go back now about five hours ago when the seven members... It's a different launch pad than they have used before. But as you said, at a minute and 12 into the flight, the solid rocket boosters, the two white uh, tanks that you just showed us, normally just fall away at 2.07 into the flight. However, at about 1.12 into this, they went a different direction. They did not fall away. And within just a matter of two, three, maybe five seconds later, there was a major explosion which appeared to be the shuttle itself and the main tank which is still attached to the shuttle and would remain attached to the shuttle until it gets over the Indian Ocean. That normally drops over the Indian Ocean and the shuttle goes on into orbit from there. Bruce, we wanted to replay the video tape. The capsule containing the astronauts. John, we've been told now that the, President uh, Reagan at the... Uh, was, as you saw, uh, very severe. It, it appeared that the, uh, the shuttle was, was just blown apart by whatever triggered that explosion. Thank you, John.
We have been told now by Sam Donaldson at the White House that President Reagan has been alerted and has been watching tape replays of the shuttle accident. For those of you who may have just tuned in, there has been a serious accident involving the Space Shuttle Challenger on this 25th Space Shuttle mission. Less than two minutes after launch, a massive explosion off the coast of Florida, and it appears that there are no survivors. There is no final confirmation from NASA. In fact, we're getting no information now from NASA. There has been a complete uh, blackout of information and communications. There was one parachute that came down. It was not an escape capsule for the seven-member crew. And uh, this was a mission that had been postponed three previous times. Finally, after further delays this morning, what appeared to be a picture-perfect launch, and yet some 90 seconds later, that massive explosion seems to have a feeling when the launch is going to go. Delay after delay, of course. The last flight, we had the feeling that uh, that the uh, we are, I'm told, go to, going to the White House now, and so we will take you back to New York. Let's go now to, there's Larry Speaks in the White House uh, briefing room. What he's just uh, seen replayed on television concerning the shuttle launch. Uh, we do not have any more information than is being provided to the public at this time. Uh, the way the Federal President found out about it is he was uh, in the Oval Office uh, with a group of senior staff uh, preparing for some questions with uh, a group of network correspondents and anchors that were having lunch in the White House uh, today uh, regarding the budget and the State of the Union. The Vice President and the Foreign Policy Advisor John Poindexter uh, came in with others and informed the President that the news had just broken. Uh, we immediately adjourned our Oval Office meeting and went into an adjoining uh, room, the President's study, where there's a television, and the President then began to review television reports of the uh, explosion there shortly after the launch. So once again, the President is, is concerned, he is, uh, is, is saddened, he is uh, very uh, anxious to have more information on it at the moment. As I say, we're learning most of our information from what the public is getting. What is your yes, best sir. information as to the condition of the crew, Larry, at this point? We don't have any more information. Uh, hopefully later we will be able to get some. And that's uh, the president's first priority is to find out what information uh, that is available. We just don't. Spoken with the we KPS just KPS. don't have any more. Uh, no, we have not. Not from the Oval Office. Will this affect uh, in any way the plans for the State of the Union tonight? I don't believe so. I'm certain that the president uh, uh, will uh, will feel compelled to to mention this, depending on the outcome of what we learn here in a few minutes. Will it affect but, uh, the uh, shuttle program, Larry? Well, that, that's hard to say. Uh, you know, here in. 15 or 20 minutes after an incident of this type is concerned. I'm sure it will not affect uh, the United States' determination to consider uh, to continue the exploration of space and all the benefits we've received from it. Uh, while, 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 while this is, is indeed tragic, uh, it certainly uh, uh, will not deter the United States in its interest in space exploration. Well, with all the pro problems that the shuttle has had, will any substantial reevaluation be done of the program itself? Well, once again, you're, you're very premature in ans asking a question concerning the future uh, of the space program. Uh, the United States has, has met adversity uh, many times before in the space program. It is one of the most effective and successful programs uh, uh, of that type that any country has ever undertaken. Larry, can you tell us anything specifically that the president said, any quotations, and did he make any mention of the fact that uh, the teacher that uh, he, he suggested, uh, that the program of a teacher in space, that that teacher was on board this flight? Well, I know that was on his mind. Quite frankly, the president was stood there in almost stunned silence as he watched the television. Uh, you, could, uh, you could certainly read uh, the concern, uh, the sorrow, uh, the anxiety, uh, on his face as he watched, uh, and the group watched around him. As I say, he was he was virtually watched in silence. Might anyone from the White House uh, be leading some sort of investigating team, or will it just be up to NASA to investigate this? All this is is very very early, and there's just nothing we can say. Our our immediate concern is the is the crew. And, uh, and all of these other questions will just have to be deferred until much later. 